Today, I want to be a little bit more personal. Our content will be a bit provocative. It will cause us to think, to look back. But I believe it is imperative in order for us to accurately flow in this dimension. I run a school, the Apothecary School of Ministry. And uh, in this school of ministry, I've been training many into working in their giftings, their callings and, and their ministries and also activating them. There are a number of things I have found to be a hindrance to discernment. I want to point them out, especially for people who have prophetic gifts. There are some things we can hinder how we flow and operate in the gifts. So we need to understand that there are a variety of things which can violate us spiritually. They distort and they contaminate our ability to discern. The first thing which affects our ability to discern is scary movies. Yes, scary movies. Because scary movies can stir up your imagination in a powerful way. And then this stirring up, and then this all, all this imagery and thoughts, they can hinder our ability to discern. Number two, our past emotional wounds. The emotional wounds we carry affect our ability to discern. So the healthier we are emotionally, the better our discernment is. So we need to check our emotional health, our EQ. We need to check it and keep it in tune so that it does not affect our ability to discern. Number three, it is bad doctrine. The things we have been taught. Bad doctrine can radically, radically affect our ability to discern. Because you can even begin seeing things which are not there. So doctrine is the source of all things. So we need good and proper doctrine. So now our discernment must be filtered through the word of God. So the word of God must be able to filter our experiences. You understand? Because the word of God is truth. The word of God is the standard. So we filter our experience through the filter of his word. You understand? So the fallible must be filtered by the infallible. Our experiences are fallible. You understand? Our experiences are subjective. But the scriptures are objective. The scriptures are infallible. So now bad doctrine is a serious hindrance to discernment. You understand? And also understanding the authority we have in Christ. You understand? Our authority in Christ and our position in Christ and New Testament realities affect our ability to discern and how far we go. Because if our doctrine is wrong, the enemy can, can torment us. The enemy can take us on wild goose chases. You understand? So it is imperative and important that our discernment is accurate. And number four, it is internal stress. Internal stress can really, really affect our ability to discern because we need to operate out of a heart of peace because without this, we will be inaccurate in our discernment. So internal stress, it needs to be dealt with. Our anxieties, depression, your mental health, it is important because it greatly affects our ability to discern. So number five, on the list which can affect our ability to discern. It is the fear of man. The fear of man can prove to be a snake. Proverbs chapter 29 verse 25, it says the fear of man will prove to be a snake, but whoever trusts in the Lord is kept safe. So our fear of man can be a snake to us. So the only thing we are allowed to fear as Christians is God himself, nothing else. You understand? So fear can be a, ser a serious hindrance. We find this in the book of Job chapter 1. We, we find this in the book of Hebrews chapter number 2. How fear can be a hindrance. In fact, John goes on to say in the book of First John, John says, fear has torment, but perfect love casts out all fear. So the fear of making mistakes, the fear of men, the fear of being ridiculed, the fear of being ostracized, the fear of being judged, the fear of making mistakes can be a serious hindrance to the flow of the gift of the, of the discerning of spirits. And number six, disobedience. Disobedience is a serious hindrance. The more obedient we are to the Lord, the more the Lord can entrust us with revealing more to us. Let me repeat that. 
the more we are obedient to the Lord, the more the Lord can entrust us with the things he reveals as we discern. Remember, unto whom much is given, much is required. You understand? So we have to be obedient. So disobedience can be a serious flaw in it. Number seven, evil motives. Sometimes we can have evil motives and our motives can taint negatively the pure gift God has given to us. So the pure gift that God has given can be tainted by our evil motives. Remember, there was once a time when Peter flowed in the gift of discernment. Remember when the Lord Jesus asked and says, Who do men say I am? Some say you're Moses. Some say you're Elijah. Some say you're one of the prophets. And he asked and said, But who do you say I am? And Peter, by the gift of revelation, he was able to discern who the Son is. He said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And then the Lord Jesus responds, he says, Flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. And then an, an evil motives take hold of Peter. And when, when the Lord Jesus began telling them about his death, Peter denied that an evil motive entered his heart. And then, it, and then the Lord Jesus had to say, Get behind me, Satan. So we see that an evil motive negatively affected his ability to discern. And our superstitions, you know, sometimes we can be very superstitious people and our superstitions can affect our ability to discern. We can be given over to doctrines of devils. And number nine, issues of lust. You know, our lust issues can be a serious problem. You understand? Our lust for, for glory, for fame, for power, greediness, you know, the works of the flesh, emulations, uh, divisions, uh, backbitings, bickerings, the, 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 the works of the flesh, they can negatively affect the gift of discernment. So with all this being said, we sum it up in this man. The Bible tells us in the book of Jeremiah, he says the heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. Who can know it? So man's heart is very, very, very evil. Man's heart is very deceptive. That's why the Lord God himself, he says, I, the Lord, I try the reins and I search the hearts. So we need to allow God to search, our, to search out our hearts and to purify them. The Bible says the following unto us. It says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So the mouth speaks out of the abundance of the heart. The Bible says again, guard your heart with all diligence. For out of it flow the issues of life. So we need to guard our heart with all diligence because out of it flow the issues of life. In the, in the book of Colossians, the Bible says, let Christ dwell in our hearts. So we need to get to a point whereby Christ is dwelling in our hearts by faith. And we surrender our hearts to him and we put them in his hand. In the book of 1 Samuel, chapter number 16, when David was to be anointed, Listen to what Samuel says. He says God does not see as man sees. In fact, God is saying this to Samuel. He says God does not see as man sees. A man looks at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. So God looks at the heart and God sees the heart. And the condition of our heart, our, the condition of our heart is imperative in our ability to discern. It can make or break us. So what is the heart? The heart is this your core, your belly. I'm not talking about the medical heart, you know, this one beating. I'm not talking about that heart. I'm thinking about your biblical heart, your core. Now your biblical heart, the core, that's what I'm talking about. It is the center of who you really are. It is the heart. Now where is the heart? The heart is that place where spirit, soul, and body converge, where they conglomerate, that place, we call it the heart. Now, the Bible says the following in the book of Psalms, chapter 86, verse 11. It says, unite my heart that I can fear your name. So we need our hearts to be united, spirit, soul, and body, that we can have singleness of mind, singleness of heart, and singleness of vision. And when Jesus reigns in our heart, our ability to discern will be sharpened. Listen to what the scriptures say. 
On the road to Emmaus, after the Lord Jesus was crucified and, and he resurrected, the Bible tells us that Cleopas, in the, in the book of Luke 24, that Cleopas and his companion, they were walking on the road to Emmaus. And on the road to Emmaus, Jesus appears to them, but he appears in the form that they do not know. And then the Lord Jesus began to expound and elaborate from the scriptures, beginning from Moses, the law, the prophets and the Psalms, the things concerning him. And what does the Lord Jesus, after he had done all that, the Bible says their hearts began to burn within them. There was the witness of the heart. Now the spirit is dwelling in the heart of men. So we need to surrender all to the spirit of God and then our ability to discern will be much better off. So even all those issues we have in the heart, once we surrender all to the Spirit of God, He will minister healing to us and will help us to separate between all of these things. Because remember, Hebrews chapter number 4, because we need to be well vested in the Word. Hebrews chapter 4 says, The Word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. It cuts to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and of the marrow. And it is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And all things are made manifest before him with whom we have to do. So the word of God, it is searching the heart. The word of God, it is trying the hearts. So we need to allow God's word to work in our hearts. Remember, as a parting thought, the Bible says in the book of Proverbs, many other devices in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord, which shall stand. So in your heart, in my heart, there are many devices. There are many things which hamper us. There are many things which bother us. So that's why we need to guard our hearts with all diligence. Because out of it flow the issues of life.